Welcome to the UPoker Academy Poker Lecture Series designed to make you a better poker player. In this video we're going to do something a little bit different. We're playing two shorthanded games at once. So we're going to be looking at two tables trying to uh, jump back and forth between them depending on how interesting our hand is. This should make the video go a little bit faster. So on the left we've raised pocket queens and we've been dunked into on a king nine king flop. And we are just going to fold here. Um, that's not the flop we were looking for with pocket queens so we can get off our hand and and not risk too much. <clears throat> so we've got ace-king on the right. Um, this is going to be a raise. We've got king-jack on the left. Also going to be a raise. So we're going to go about five times the big blind here. About four times the big blind here. The, the difference is on the right we are looking at two blinds already in and on the left we're looking at just one blind in. So when we do raise we are going to bet as a c-bet. And we take it down on the right which is great. Uh, the 9 comes on the turn. We're not terrified of it, but there's no reason to bluff against this. He did call the flop, so we're going to try to check this down. Maybe be ahead of a draw of some kind. He does bet, and we are going to fold. So on the table on the right here, we have 7-4 in the small blind. If it does get called all the way around, um, this is probably still going to be a fold. So we've got King-10 on the left. Uh, standard raise, 3 times the big blind. And see over here, our 7-4 our would have been a very, uh, it would have been a hand, we would have had a straight, but a very dangerous hand because it's very dry, we could lose a lot of money on this, and there could be somebody with the nut straight, a, a jack-queen. So on the left we raised, we are going to c-bet here about half pot. There's only two players in the pot, so we do c-bet. Um, it's a very low, very uh, wet flop, so we do have some outs with the overcards. We also have some outs with the diamond. The overcards are worth about six outs, I'd say, and the diamond's worth an additional two, so about eight outs. Not, a, not an unplayable hand. Um, just to call instead of a raise, I think I'm going to fire another bet here. I don't think he's got his beat. Um, Ace-5 is going to be a fold here on the button. The reason we fire that there is because the board is so dry, there's no indication that he has a pair yet. If he doesn't have a pair, I think we're ahead. He could have had a six. He could have had a diamond draw. If he had a six, he just hit it and we still have nothing, so we are going to fold, and we are going to rebuy. Okay, queen 10 is going to be a raise. And we get men re-raised. You're always going to call them in re-raise. You're getting 2 to 15 on your money, putting in $2 extra to be in a 15 chip pot. So it doesn't matter how bad your hand is that you raise with, you're going to call the min re-raise. And we flop middle pair here. It's not a great hand, especially given that he limp re-raised, but a lot of players do that without an ace. They do it with a weak hand. I don't think he's got an ace, so he's most likely going to fold. All right, over on the right, we're going to fold. It's been raised to us. Now, they both called, but we did turn what is probably our miracle card. So now we've got 26, the pot's 42, we're just going to put the rest in. And jack 3 is going to be a fold. And he does suck out to what I guess might be a an 8-outer or so with his pocket kings. Um, no big deal, we put it in a head and that's all we can hope to do. So here we had a player post out of position. Um, we've got king-queen in the big blind. We have a limper and we are going to be raising this. So we've got several limpers all the way around. We expect PD to fold. So he raised this bigger than normal because there are so many limpers and we do expect them to call with weaker hands. You want to raise before the flop to a value that your opponents will still call. So if you've got the best hand and you can get them to call half their stack off, then you want to raise half their stack. Of course, I don't think I can get them to call 20 here, um, but I do think I can get them to call 8, which I did. So I'm going to see bet half pot.
This flop doesn't hit lots of people. Um, he might have a lone ace or something. If he did have an ace, he's just hit a straight. And he did just have queen eight, so we did take it down with king high. Eight four is going to be a check fold. Jack eight in the uh, big blind is going to be a check fold. No reason to play weak hands just because we're better than our opponents. Uh, the secret's going to be to uh, the way we, we prove that we're better than our opponents is to play better hands than them and, and stack them. If we've got weak hands, we're most likely going to be getting stacked ourselves. So the Jack-10 suited is going to be a, a raise. Actually, it's already been raised um, by a player with a pretty big stack. This might be a good place just to call since he's shown some aggression. I don't think he's he's super strong here. But Jack-10 is one of those hands that you can call and play for a, a, a big hand, or you can raise and play for a top pair. It's really right in the middle. So in that case, since we did get the min raise, we do know we're going to have a sizable enough pot for ourselves, and we did hit a great hand. So we are going to try to extract the maximum possible. And we're going to do that by betting probably five here. We're not really scared of anything that could come out. On the right, we're going to raise our five, four to three times. Um, because we're not scared of anything, we really do need to sweeten this pot a little bit. So we're going to bet a little bit lower. Hope we get a couple of people who are willing to call us. So the five, four raise didn't go great. We got two callers and the ace did come. But we do have a pair, so all is not lost. So we're going to see bet here. So here we're going to go on and, and raise our bet up a little more, betting 15, so that we can put the rest of our stack in on the river if he calls here. So we've got the a6 out of position, but we flop a monster. We've got the pair and the net flush draw, so we are going to bet and raise and try to get it all in actually on the flop here. It may look like what we can, but with all the redraws we have to the nuts, it's actually a very strong hint. Here with pocket twos, we're going to raise. It's always good to raise your pocket pairs if nobody's raised before you. Uh, the reason is that it helps you build the pot um, for when you flop your set. So here we do flop the nuts. Um, we've got 432 in a 60 chip pot, and he is betting into this into us, which is a great uh, spot for us. Um, the option to call or raise is going to be a tricky one. I think I can call here and induce a further bluff. That's what we were afraid of, is that spade to come on the turn, because that often shuts the action down. But it looks like it's not against him, so he's going to bet again, and we are just going to call again. Looks like there's a good chance he might have a high spade. And we do get our entire stack in. So if we'd raised on the flop, he would have folded and we wouldn't have won all that money. So that's why we opted to call. It keeps the bluffs in his range. And that was a bluff um, on the flop. And it might have been a bluff on the turn had he not hit what was the second best hand. So here he's raised 40 and we've got Queen Jack. He's been raising a lot. So Queen Jack's a fair hand to re-raise here. Um, ideally we want to fold or we want to flop a great hand. We don't flop a great hand, but we still have to see better. And he calls. Um, we don't like the nine. It makes a lot of hands uh, good. Makes tens and uh, fives and really good hands. Um, can we bet again on the river? I think uh, I think not. This is a kind of a calling station opponent. I think we'd be sinking money to, to bet here again. So we are just going to check and give it up. He def does have ace jack. Um, so he did raise with a reasonable hand, and he was right to call our three bet. Might have been a good spot to fold on that flop to the C bet. Uh, a lot of our hands absolutely smashed that flop, so by not folding on the flop, that might have been a small mistake. But it worked out for him this time, so we can't we can't fault him for it. Under the gun with 7-6 uh, suited. 
We are six-handed with a limper. It's probably not the best spot to raise, but it's not a mistake here. So we do get the kind of action we were hoping for. We want to get a lot of people in the pot with the 7-6, but we don't get the flop we want. Now that there are three players in the pot, it's not going to be a good C-bet as a bluff, so we are going to check behind. So the a7 is not going to do us any good, we're just going to fold it. Um, even though it's a, arguably a stronger hand than 7-6, which we just raised and we're under the gun, the difference is the a7 doesn't make really, really strong hands. It doesn't make straights or flushes, whereas the 7-6 does. So we can raise the 7-6 and try to build a big pot. With an a7, we actually want a smaller pot. So raising here under the gun would be a mistake, a pretty clear mistake. So against the raise, our queen seven is no good. Alright, we're going to be in the big blind with the jack-4. That's uh, it's not a very playable hand, so we are just going to check-fold it. And that flop we don't like at all. There's too many people in the bot to bluff at it, so we're just going to check and fold it. And here with the ace three against a raise, a re-raise, and a re-re-raise. Uh, for one, this just illustrates how crazy this game is playing. Um, but for two, this is a great spot to be in because if we'd had, you know, ace queen there, we would be happy against getting in, getting it in against at least two of these players. Maybe one of them has like pocket kings or something. But the chances one or both of them have weak hands. So the queen five, the small blind, as, as we noted over here, they did have weak ends. Notice again how many times c2 has raised. Of course we're going to fold here, but we're going to start playing back against him. We're in the perfect position to do it. We've got a small stack, which gives us some more room to, to three bet and then c bet and maybe get it all in with a top pair type hand. So being out of position doesn't hurt you as much with the small stack, so we're lucky to be there. We're lucky to be directly on his left, so we have the first option after he makes that raise. So we are going to start, start re-popping him and playing some more aggressive pots, some bigger pots against C2. Now he did raise with pocket eights there, which is a reasonable hand to raise with. So when somebody starts raising a lot, I mean, they could be running very, very hot, or they could be, um, you know, getting a little bit too aggressive. It's important to note which is the case. I think he's, he's simply raising too much to be running that hot. He has shown down several good hands when he does raise, but I think if we went through the hand history, we, we might find some weaker hands so why don't we do that real quick? Let's see if I can find the hand history. So let's just pull this up real quick, go back to the start. 
Um, we're looking for any hand where c2 raises this hand before the flop. So he raised here before the flop, and he had king 7. So yeah, he's definitely getting out of line. Um, didn't raise there. Raised here, didn't show down. So we're going to fold on both these tables. Go back to looking at our hand history. Here you race with ace three. So yeah, definitely getting out of line. On the last hand, it didn't show that. Okay, so this was raised under the gun and called in three places. We have to repop this. We have a great hand. So we're gonna raise high enough that we might can get this heads up. But we'd be happy taking down this pot right now. Um, we'd be more happy if we'd had just one caller. We do, and we actually have position on our collar, which makes us even better. And he's going to lead off into us. Um, unlike when we had the nuts here, we have to defend our equity, so we are just going to re-raise. He does have a draw, pretty good one, but we do uh, win the pot. So if we just called there, he could have, uh, he, he got, he would have gotten away cheaper than if we re-raise. So it's important with a dry board like that when we don't have the nuts to protect our equity. That uh, takes precedence over keeping bluffs in uh, in their range. <coughs> Excuse me. So the eight queen here and he didn't raise, to me he says he's got a pretty weak hand, we're going to raise and try to isolate him. And we get re-raised from the big blind, obviously we're just going to call the re-raise, it's still putting 30 into a 220 chip pot, so we have to play it, we're not going to re-raise him again. Um, and we do flop, we've got shot straight draw, so we're 1 to 8. Sorry, one, uh, one to twelve, and he's got. Um, we could potentially win maybe thirteen hundred on this pot. And he's betting a hundred. We would have to stack him every time we caught our hand to call here, so we are going to fold. So here we're going to raise our ace check on the button. We just have one opponent in the pot, so a c-bet's usually going to be effective here. So the queen-jack suited's going to be a raise. And it's already been raised, but it's one of those spots where it's worth a re-raise. we got to build this pot up a little bit more than just two chips will get us. This is different from the jack-10 because we are not quite in the best position and our hand is stronger so we are just going to re-raise this. But again it's really on the uh, the border. You could call, you could re-raise. <coughs> so the pocket fives were not in great position so we are just going to check it. It's been donked out with a min bet. Um, against three players we're not supposed to see bet so we're not going to raise the min bet. We are going to call it though because we do have outs to call it. So we're going to fold over here on the right. Um, there's 
there's no reason to try to call a pot size bet when there's so many over cards. And here on the left, uh, we're going to give up and check it down. Because even if we were to bluff out two of these players, one would probably call us with a 7 or a 10 or something. And the 10 4 is just a fold. Nine three is no good. Eight three is a fold. So I would like to, on this table on the right, um, catch C2 raising with a hand and have a hand that we can re-raise them with, something like a pocket pair or suited connectors, something that makes a big hand, <coughs> and then getting our entire stack in against him. <coughs> so here it was re-raised to him and he re-raised back. To me that indicates he's got a very, very strong hand. Um, misplaying it, of course. A lot of times he would be better off making a bigger raise there. Um, but simply the actions indicate that he might have a strong hand. When he does, he has the ace-king and takes it down. I definitely would have raised more for the flop there, because you ideally want your opponent to fold now that the pot's already so big. So we've got pocket seven. It's going to be a call here with three players in. And we do flop the seven. Damn you, uh, raised before the flop, so we're going to check it to him. Hope we can get him to bet. And ideally, General X will call. And he does, and this is the time when we have a decision, do we raise here, or do we call? And because the board is so dry, we are going to put in a raise. And it's going to be GM Nonis, so we are going to get all in here. On the right here, we have the gut shot. It's not really good enough to bluff with, so we are just going to check it down. So this might be the spot where we make a stand. It's not the greatest hand to re-raise with here, but his hand's most likely pretty weak. <clears throat> and we do hit a hand, so we are going to see bet. We would always see bet whether we hand, had a hand or not. We don't like um, the jack of spades, but I'm going to bet again. I don't think he's got the ace. I think he will fold at this point, because he doesn't like the jack of spades either. And he hasn't folded yet. Um, he might have the ace. He very would, well could have it, but he just has the queen. I don't think he would have folded the river to a bet. He has kind of a calling station. So while we did have the right idea to put him on a weak hand and say that he didn't like the ace, in this case it didn't work because he did have a queen and he was happy to go to the felt with that. The jack-queen is going to be raised. The ace-10 was raised. So we, turn, uh, we flop the top pair. We are happy with this hand. It's a very, very dry flop. We definitely have the best hand at this point. So we're going to put in a sizable C bet.
the A fiber is going to fold. And we take down the bottom left. So C2 is really just giving stacks away over here. I'm going to rebuy. I've been playing a little bit short stacked over here with the intention of building my stack up um, with a lower risk, but after seeing how much money C2 is giving away, I definitely think we have an edge on this table, and I'm going to go in and rebuy to exploit that edge to its full profit potential. Two there. We are playing big, big pot poker against C2, so a jack 2 doesn't make very big pots. It's great for a uh, small ball. If you are just raising and C betting and getting lots of folds, any hand is going to be good for that. But for the strategy we're playing right now, we're looking for big cards and pseudo connectors. So not much here. Just the bottom pair. Uh, so we are going to check and fold this. The jack three on the left uh, is going to be a check fold. The pocket tens in a great position. Um, he didn't raise. That indicates probably a weaker hand. So we are going to raise, try to isolate him. But unfortunately, his hand just wasn't good enough to play with us there. So with the queen four suited, we are going to call our small blind. Uh, a suited hand is generally good enough to call a small blind with. 
and we do flop top pair, so it's time to lead out. Hopefully shut this hand down. So the ace eight's gonna be a fine raise, we're gonna raise to forty and isolate C2. We do get called in two places, the pot's a little bit bigger than we hoped. Uh, the flop's not great for us. We do have the gut shot, but it hits a pretty significant range. Still, there are only two players involved, so it's going to be a reasonably good c-bet. We're not going to win the c-bet as often as we hope, but we do have some outs. And if we can fold one player out, that might take some hands out of their range. So our hand does improve slightly. Now we have the nines and the fours. Um, and he's bet small, just 100 into a 250 chip pot, so we can call that just on pot odds. And we do hit the 9. So right now we've got the second nuts, the only hand that beats us is an 8 jack, which is very unlikely for him to have. He bets we need to raise for value. And we're not going to get much value out of this hand, so just a min raise should work. We have another game starting up. Um, let's see if I can't rearrange this video so we can see all three games. I don't know how hard this is going to be to see. Okay, so we're going to shut down probably one of these games so that we can keep playing. I think we're going to play just one last hand here and then shut down this game. It's not supposed to be a heads up video. And one thing to note is that when you are playing heads up and you do want to sit down and sit out, make sure you always play your button. That's where you make money in heads up. So you're just going to play it the same way you would before you go in and leave the game. In fact, there used to be a professional poker player who was not very popular in the community because all he did was sit down at heads-up tables, play his button, and then leave. And he had a pretty significant win rate doing that because the button makes you so much more money than being out of position. So you're just going to fold here and leave. <coughs> so we got the ace-jack and we raised. We have to see bet there are only two players in the pot, and we've got some outs. <clears throat> and C2, with the call, most likely has a 10 or a 6. But we do root for the jack, which are our outs. And he's bet pot. There's not much value in raising here. We'd just be getting involved with people who have better hands than ours. So if we'd raised there, he would have fold. But if he had a set or two pair, he would have called or we raised us. So raising there didn't have much value. We did the best we could by inducing the bluff. So 
So are we, we are coming to the end of our video. Um, thank you for joining us at UPoker Academy. Please check us out on riskoriented.com. For more poker strategy delivered directly to your YouTube account, please like us and subscribe to us. And for more poker strategy right now, continue on to our next poker lecture by clicking here.